it's been quite a while since I did my last what's in my bag video sort of thing. And a lot's changed, so I figured why not record another one? Because uh, there's some significant improvements I've made to my kit. It's fall season. I'm in Zion National Park. It's a beautiful place. Fall color is excellent. And I've been running around all week shooting with this kit that's on my back right now. So let's talk about that. Let's, uh, let's just take it from the top and start with the bag. So now my entire kit fits inside of this Low Pro Protactic 450 AW Mark I. This is the original version, not the Mark II. They released an updated one that has some additional improvements to it. Uh, I haven't bought into that one yet. I just had this around for ages and figured I might as well just use what I got. So I'm sticking with the Mark I. These two sacks on the side don't come with it. These are the F64 uh, 4x5 film holder cases. And I've got them molly strapped to the side of my Pro Tactic. It's really convenient being able to strap additional accessories to the front or size of this bag. I have two of those so I can carry lots of film holders. Really, they only actually fit about five each. If you squeeze them really tight, you can get six in each one. I don't like to do that because I don't want to cram the film holders. I, I like to be a little delicate with my film holders uh, just because I'm worried I'm gonna induce light leaks or some crazy thing. So I just stick to putting five in each one. That gives me the capacity to run 10 holders for 20 sheets of film. That's a lot. But given how far I tend to trek on a day away from the car, it's nice to have multiple options with me. On this trip, I got two different types of E6. So I'm running Provia 100, Velvia 50. And then I've got color negative, which would be Ektar or Portra 160, and a black and white option. In this case, it's been T-Max 100. I know I said I was switching to Delta, but I had one more box of T-Max and I wanted to use it up since it was going expired. So T-Max it is. I like to put my film holders in a Ziploc bag and that's just to keep dust and dirt and on the off chance I get caught in a rainstorm or something like that. It keeps rain and moisture out of it. Uh, the first day in Zion this year, it did rain all night. We had the washes were flowing. It's really awesome. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for that video because uh, yeah, it was really, really beautiful conditions. On the other side, I got my tripod hanger, which does come with the bag, or at least on a Mark I. I imagine a Mark II is the same, but I don't quote me on that. And hanging from that is my really right stuff tripod. I'll put the model numbers on the bottom because I can't remember exactly what the model number of this thing is. I'm sure it's on here somewhere, but I'll just put them on the bottom of the screen. But it's a nice, really stiff, sturdy pair of legs. And then hanging from the top on the platform is a matching really right stuff ball head. It's got the quick release lever on it, which has been really, really handy. My 4x5 has an Arca Swiss compatible plate on the bottom of it that has both the 3 8 and the quarter 20 bolt through it. So it's super, super solid. And it fits really, really well into this ball head. I've really been happy with this. I'm sure that this will wear out over time, lose some of its strength, but conveniently they left the bolt in the top where you can change just the quick release plate if anything ever happens to it. So far, really happy with this one. So moving inside the bag, I'll start with the camera. You might have noticed that I've recently switched to a Chamonix 45 F Mark II. If you're not familiar with the Chamonix stuff, this is of course a folding field camera instead of a monorail like my old style one. And I've used a lot of the similar design elements from the Intrepid camera system. If you're familiar with those, which I still have mine, my Intrepid 4x5 Mark IV. This is honestly just kind of more of a refined version of it. You know, it's solid wood instead of plywood. The bellows is longer, it's synthetic bellows, uh, but I've been really happy with it. I won't go into all the details of this camera, but let me know if you guys want to know all about this camera, I'm more than happy to maybe do a dedicated video on it and I'll talk all about it, uh, especially once I get some more shots on my belt with it. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Be more than happy to review the entire camera if you'd like. But that's the main camera. I've been shooting exclusively with that camera for a little bit now. Uh, I still own the Toyo 45G monorail that I was carrying around. And I almost brought it with me because I was worried that it might not have enough bellows extension on the Chamonix to shoot some of the stuff that I was hoping to shoot on this trip. But ultimately I decided to leave it at home and see, let the chips fall where they may. So far I haven't needed it. I've been able to focus my Chamonix straight at the ground. No problems, it's got plenty of bellows. But I don't expect that I'm gonna necessarily get rid of the Toyo anytime soon. Maybe I'll take it out once in a while just for fun. Cause it really is a nice camera to use. You know, super rigid, it's more rigid than this. You know, it's got gear adjustments on everything all the movements, it's, it's, it's a beautiful camera. It's just so heavy. And then you add to that all the additional equipment that comes with it. So I had to get a bigger tripod, a bigger tripod head, you know. This whole kit has really dropped the weight like 
feels like in half. It's probably not that much. I haven't actually weighed this, but I have a fish scale at home, so I'll weigh it and I'll put that on screen, uh, what the difference in weight was from my old bag to my new one. But moving on from that, uh, the Low Pro Pro Tactic has divider system and stuff in it, just like a lot of camera bags these days. Uh, it doesn't have a removable cube or anything. I'm not worried about that. But with the dividers, I'm able to section off enough room to carry a pretty good assortment of lenses. I've been able to fit pretty repeatedly about four lenses in this bag. I do own more lenses than that. So I've got an additional little lens carrier bag from Stone Photo Gear. Not affiliated, really like his stuff though. Makes a lot of really cool stuff for us large format guys. So if you uh, are familiar with him, uh, maybe check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Makes some really good, nice stuff. So I've got one of those carriers that I've got additional lenses in the truck. And I just kinda, depending on what I'm gonna go shoot for the day, I'll switch them in and out. But in here right now, I've got my 240 millimeter Nikon. A 5.6 lens, I believe it's, yeah, it's a Nikkor W is what it is. So 240. Then I have my Fujinon, 180 millimeter F5.6. Really shoot with this a lot. I'm really happy with this lens. It was the first lens I ever bought. Still shoot with it all the time. Love it. Then another Nikkor W, 150 millimeter, which admittedly is a little odd to have 150 millimeters and 180 millimeters in the same bag. That's working for me. Sometimes I need... You know, just a little bit wider. Sometimes I need a little bit longer. It's been working, you know. And I don't really have any much in between this and my wide angle lenses. That's actually a blind spot. I'd probably need to buy another lens to fill it in. Maybe a 135 or something. Maybe leave me some suggestions if you got some 135 or maybe 125. Somewhere in that range of lenses that you really like. And then the last one that's in the bag currently is a Fujinon 75 millimeter f5.6. Been using the snot out of this lens too this trip it's been really handy been shooting a lot of panorama style stuff and this is this has been great not currently in the bag but also with me on this trip i have a fujinon w 300 millimeter f5.6 and an icon sw 90 millimeter 4.5 that's in the truck right now i also still have that fujinon 105 millimeter lens floating around it's actually meant for more like a six by nine so the coverage isn't very it's just barely enough for 4x5. But sometimes it saves my bacon, so that's with me too, just in case I need it. That's my full lens complement. Of course, I got a dark cloth with me. This is a full-size Harrison Silver Classic. I don't think there's anything more to that. There's, I'll put that down on the bottom too. It's a little bulkier than some of the ones you see that just go over your head. Uh, but sometimes it's really nice to have that additional, you know, area to wrap around the camera, especially with the Chamonix, because it's got this gap on the bottom that lets light through. It's kind of nice to be able to tuck it in there and get really dark if you need it. It's just the first dark cloth I ever bought. Haven't had a reason to upgrade to anything else yet. Been really happy with it. So, yeah. A recent addition lately has been a Horseman 6x12 120 roll film back for the 4x5. This is a graph lock style back. The Chamonix accepts graph lock accessories, so this works really well for that. It's a nice wide panorama style frame, uh, but not as wide as the 6x17, of course. Uh, but this doesn't come with some of the restrictions that the 6x17 film backs have. I almost actually pulled the trigger on a uh, Shenhao 6x17 film back that comes with the ground glass and everything, but it's a brick. It's huge. This is so much smaller and easier to carry around. But also, the 6x12 format is almost as wide as a 4x5 sheet of film. So with the 6x17 film backs, because it's so much wider than a 4x5 sheet of film, the lens coverage has to be appropriate for that format. So if you go too wide, you start to get a lot of light fall off in the corners. And you end up having to use, you know, center ND filters and stuff. But if you go too long, you also don't have enough image circle to cover the entire 6x17 format. So you get pinned in with this kind of middle focal length range that you can use for lenses. The 6x12, I can use any lens I have. I can use anything from my 75 millimeter wide all the way to my 300 millimeter if I want. I've done that actually, shooting 300 millimeter way off in the distance, just getting the nice slice of something in the distance, you know. So yeah, it's been fun to play with. I've shot quite a bit with it actually this trip. And yeah, been pretty happy with it. The only thing you might notice, I got a rubber band on it. That's the only thing that horsemen, I think, could improve on here. Is they don't have a way to lock the dark slide in. So if you're not careful, you just throw it in and out of your bag or something the dark slide can pop open and ruin the exposure that's there. So I put a rubber band around it just to make sure the dark slide can't come up like that when I'm pulling it in and out of the bag. But that's the Horseman 6x12 120 roll film back. Next up, pretty critical piece of kit is my light meter. 
I use the Pentax digital spot meter. This meter served me really, really well. I've really been happy with it. I got mine decked out and all the stickers from Nick Carver's course on mastering manual metering. It's uh, I'll give him a shout out real quick. If you're new to metering and you're not really sure how to go about doing that, uh, it's a good course. You should pick it up and watch it. If you're a little more advanced and you've been doing it for a little while, maybe not so much. You might already know a lot of this stuff. It's based pretty much on his own system. Uh, it's just a little bit different terminology, but it's really good for beginners. He does a good job. He's a good teacher. Now I feel like I've grown beyond what he's teaching in the course, but I like his stickers and his scale system he uses. So I keep it on here as a reminder. Some people like the zone system and using zone numbers. So, you know, put everything at zone five. The terminology is a little different in his case. It's, it's based off of incremental stops from zero. So plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. Yeah, it works for me. I like it. Great meter, been really happy with it. It does take a battery, so I carry an extra battery in the bag. That's in there somewhere. I'm not gonna dig for it because it's really small. That's annoying. <laughs> I don't wanna lose it. Uh, but I've actually never had the battery wear out and I've been shooting with this for almost two years now. Arguably also as important is the cable release. This is a, I'm not sure what brand this is. I don't know if I'll even be able to find it. I don't know what order these videos are coming out in. So if I haven't yet revealed where I got this from, I'm not gonna say anything, because that'll be coming up. It's a nice cable release. It's got a nice little weave to it. It's a little nicer than some of the cheapos that I got from B&H or something. Yeah, pretty important item. I actually have two. I have a secondary that's actually a cheaper one from B&H, also in the bag. So I carry two cable releases, just in case I lose one or it breaks. This is in no particular order, by the way. I'm just kind of grabbing things out of the bag as they come out. This is a miniature rocket blower, the Gyotos or whatever, a little miniature small bulb blower. It's handy just in case I need to clean something, you know, anywhere, anything from a lens, you know, a film holder, anything. It's just kind of nice to have a little rocket blower and blow some dust off of things if you need to. Next up is my filter kit. I have a low pro uh, filter holder. Uh, and inside of here is just kind of the, you know, index card style flaps to hold your filters. I'm still using the 100 millimeter square style filters. You know, rectangular grads, but then square filters fit in the 100 millimeter filter kit. This, my kit is from Lee. It's one of the older style ones. I'm still using their old filter holder, which is in this bag, along with all of my adapter rings. They got some newer style ones. It's supposed to be a little better. This is just the old one. Brass fittings on it. It's got the 105 millimeter polarizer ring on it. I also use Lee's 105 millimeter landscape polarizer. It has a little bit of a warming effect to it. It's old. If I was to start over, I might pick something newer, something more convenient like magnetic or something, but it's what I got and it works well. The 100 millimeter system allows me to use this filter kit on all of my cameras, whether I'm doing digital, any of the lenses, any of the lenses with my large format camera or even my six by six Bronica or whatever I want. And then just comes with the territory. You gotta carry a whole grip of different adapter rings for each one of your lenses. In this case, I've got everything from 52 millimeters to 82, I think, and everything in between because every one of my front elements is a different size, so I gotta carry a whole grip of rings. Real pain. Like I said, if I was gonna do it again, I'd probably pick something else, but it's working for me, so I'm sticking with it. But the holder and the adapters are just in a kit that came with the holder, I think. It doesn't quite fit, but I can just barely squeeze the Velcro strap in so it stays contained. It keeps the rings from bouncing all over on the ground and stuff every time you open your bag. Filter wise, I am using, like I said, I have the Lee landscape polarizer. In addition to that, in here, I've got a Lee 81B warming filter. Made quite a bit of use of this over this trip. Just shooting some slide film or color reversal film down in the shade. Helps keep things from going too blue. I do have a Lee six stop little stopper, which has been no use to me at all on this trip, as well as my Lee 10 stop big stopper. To be honest, I could have probably just left these at home and been just fine, but they were in my bag, so they came with. And then I got a series of graduated NDs. So I have a Lee one stop, two stop, and a three stop graduated ND filter. And then the last one is a three stop reverse. So it's got a quick transition at the bottom for like a horizon line for like sunset or something and then a gradient up to in the top. I'll be honest, I've never used this filter. I got it because I thought it'd be really handy to shoot some you know sunsets and stuff with it, but then I haven't used it once. 
I'm sure it's a great filter, but I wouldn't know. That's everything in this filter kit. I have an additional kit down in the truck, which I forgot to bring with me. Sorry about that, but I don't normally carry it in a bag, but it also has a red 25 filter in it. In addition to some smaller adapter rings and a filter kit for the Bronica 6x6. And I'm using a high-tech 75 millimeter set for that camera. Something that's also come in handy for me this trip is just a set of gray cards. Actually, it's a gray, white, and a black card. These are just cheap ones off Amazon. I don't use them for color balance, so I don't care about the, if the white's accurate or not. I just want the middle tone, which isn't probably the most accurate middle tone, but it's close enough. It's been, it's been doing fine for me, and it's really easy to carry around. I've seen like Ben Horn and those guys that got those like pop out ones that are bigger. Those are, that would actually be really handy if you, you know to be able to throw in the scene and walk away. This thing you got to meter really up, you know, pretty close to it because it's such a small target. If I was to buy these again, I would definitely get a bigger target. Um, but because I had these, they fit nice in the bag. This is what I've been using. But for smaller scenes, when you have really controlled lighting, you can just throw this on the ground, meter off of that. That's your exposure. It's been pretty handy for some of the smaller scenes I've been shooting. Getting close to the end now, just a couple little bits and bobs. I have my trusty small miniature Milwaukee tape measure. I use this for measuring my bellows extension. It's come in handy quite a few times on this trip. If I'm aiming at the ground or something, got to make sure you measure how far your bellows is extended because if it's overextended, you have to compensate in your exposure for that. This one's been working really well for me because it has not only Imperial, but it has metric units in it as well. And of course, metric is what's relevant to me on the camera with your focal length. Also a couple various lens cloths. This is just one that came with my Zeiss lens cleaner fluid, which I actually forgot, but I normally carry a little spritzer of uh, lens cleaner too, so I can clean my lenses in case something gets on them. Uh, a focusing loop. This one's really small. Came from Mitutoyu. This is a carryover from an old job that I had. This is a 7X. Really small and nice to carry around. The only problem with it though, because of how short it is, uh, you have to get your face really close to the ground glass when you're using it. And when it's cold, that's a problem because you start fogging up your ground glass and get a lot of condensate on there. So this may end up getting retired for something that's a little more appropriate for the large format camera. This is actually meant to do like small inspections on parts and stuff for manufacturing. Uh, but it's what I had, still working great for me. 7X power, easy to carry around. Also a stopwatch, this is a digital one. I like the idea of having an all mechanical stopwatch, but I don't own one. And they were really expensive to find one that I would trust to be accurate. I wouldn't say that this is probably the epitome of accuracy either, uh, but I probably trust a cheaper digital stopwatch above a cheap mechanical one, if you get what I'm saying. Having small semiconductor electronics and you know crystals for timing uh, seems a little more accurate than having a poorly adjusted mechanical one. So it's been working fine for me. It's always on. I thought that would drive me nuts, have, you know, because I figured the batteries would die, but I've had this for two years too, and it is yet to die on me yet. And if I did pull this out of my bag tomorrow morning or something and the batteries were dead, I guess I could always time off my iPhone or something until I can get the battery placed for it. So far, so good. It's been working great for me. None of my lenses have a shutter speed that's longer than a second, so if you're going to take an exposure longer than that, you're going to need a stopwatch. Buried in the pockets here, i got a couple of these Zeiss little cleaning packets. You can get these... You know, for a couple bucks, you get a whole box of these and they come pre-wet, little moist towelettes with cleaner in them. I think they're actually meant for like eyeglasses, but work great for lens too. Home stretch now, just a couple little things left. This is a cold shoe mountable or hot shoe mountable light, LED light source, which is actually dead right now. I just realized, so I need to charge this. But what's handy about this is the front of the Chamonix and also my Toyo did too, has a cold shoe mount on the very top of it right here. And this light will sit right in there. A little lock collar to lock it down. It has a mini little ball head on it to where you can position this light wherever you want it to go. I haven't needed it yet this trip. Obviously I just now realize that it's dead. So of course I haven't been using it. Uh, but in case you're somewhere like in a canyon that's really dark or something like that, this little bit of light shining like a like little coal miner light right on the front of your camera can help you focus. So that's why it's in my bag. Now all of my lenses, my full lens complement is all f5.6 lenses, which means they're a little bulkier and heavier to carry, but I like having that really nice bright lens, especially on a camera like the Chamonix that has a really bright ground glass on it anyway. But just in case I get into some slot canyon or something where it's a little too dark to see what's going on, 
this can save your bacon and help you focus just a little bit better. And then you also don't have to hold it because it ratchets down into your cold tube mount instead of having to use your phone or something as a light source. Here's my spare battery for my light meter, which is actually for like a pet collar. <laughs> but it's the batteries that it takes. Uh, they're really cheap, uh, easy to carry, just really small. I have a small baggie here with a bunch of torn off pieces from the film boxes of whatever film I'm shooting. Those go into the back of the Horseman film back so I know which film I have loaded. Earlier I was shooting some black and white negative and I don't think I actually have one for that film stock so I just flipped one around so that it's white. So it's black and white. I guess it works. Just about done here. This little small cool tool. I found this on B&H's website. It was one of the recommended accessories. It has a really thick straight blade on one side and a small Allen key on the other. So I can use this to tighten, you know, Arca Swiss plates or, you know, L brackets for my cameras or even some of my tripod legs. I can use this to crank that down if I need to. Now the last few things are video items. If you're interested in that, I'll go through that as well. So I'm shooting this main angle with a Panasonic GH5 Mark I. It's an older camera, but it works well for me. It's got the Lumix G Vario 12 to 35 on it as the lens. And then I've got a Deity shotgun style small microphone uh, with a dead cat on it. It's not powered. It's just pulling off of mic power off the camera. Uh, similar to the Rode, like Video Micro or whatever like that. This one just has some additional features and yeah, it's the one that I have mounted right now. Because I shoot all these videos, you know, in 4K on this camera as much as I can, it chews up a lot of batteries, a lot of memory cards. So I've got a small Think Tank single battery holder. I carry a spare battery with me all times because that battery wears out constantly and I have to keep, you know, cycling batteries in and out of the charge to make sure I can still make videos for you guys. Uh, but on the back of this little Think Tank holder, it's pretty handy. It's got a little flap here where I can store two AAA batteries. These go from my lav mic, which is on my chest right now. I have a Zoom F1 uh, body pack recorder that's recording my audio from my lav mic right now, which is, you might have seen floating around on my chest from video to video. And just in case my batteries die, which they do from time to time, I have a spare set here. And then buried way, way in here, an additional memory card. The GH5 has dual memory card slots. I have them set to record sequentially. So when one fills up, it switches to the next. And then it alerts me like it is right now that the first memory card's full. So then once I get back to the truck, I'll swap that out and for a new memory card. But just in case I forget and both memory cards fill up, I have a spare one back here just in case. So I can continue to make these videos. I have wireless kits. I have the Rode, like video, whatever wireless kit that they came out with, the Video Go crap. Not been happy with it. Uh, I've had interference issues with it and battery life problems. Um, it hasn't been the best. So I just go back to tried and true, do a wired lav with its own audio source, and I sync the audio up in post. Just in case something happens to my lav pack, which in the past it, some, you know, the battery will die and I don't know it or something like that. That's what the shotgun mic on top of the GH5 is for, so I got backup audio. And then the final thing in my bag that I was using just a bit ago to record the GH5 is the Osmo Pocket 2. I carry that up here on my shoulder strap just in case I need to record something quick, you know. Haven't actually needed to use it yet this trip, but I've used it quite a bit in other videos. It's been really handy to have, really nice and compact, so that stays here. Also functions as a backup video device in case this thing dies and I don't have a battery or something. So that's everything in my bag, 2022 style, here from Zion National Park. I'll put links to all of this stuff down in the description in case you want to check something out. May or may not be affiliate links. I don't know if I still have that set up. If they are, I'll put it clearly in the description above it that it's an affiliate link. Just know that if you click on that, it does help me out a little bit. Give me just a little bit of a kickback. Doesn't cost you anything, but it helps support me to help you make more videos just like this one. But it's been a great trip so far. I look forward to uh, putting up the videos from Zion this year. It's been pretty productive. I haven't seen the film yet, but I'm hopeful that it's gonna turn out pretty well. So stay tuned for that. You want to make sure you don't miss those videos. Make sure you subscribe. Let me know if you like this video by hitting the like button down below while you're at it. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you in the next video.